Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. You know, healing energy can be channeled into and through the body via the hands, crystals, or even feathers. And it restores the body's natural balance and health. So today, we're going to talk about six different tools that you can use to channel in energy healing. So stay tuned and I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Lisa Maria, your host of Spiritually Speaking Podcast. And today we are talking about how you can use six different tools to channel energy and and also to understand energy channeling as a whole. Because healing energy can be channeled into and through the body using the hands, crystals, feathers, and some other things. And it restores the body's natural balance and health. From the dawn of time to the new age, healing and balance have been the focus of many religions and therapies. Spiritual healing, a belief in a higher power's ability to heal us, or indeed in the body's ability to heal itself, has been employed a great deal longer than modern medicine with its reliance on chemicals and surgery. So basically, we rely on our higher power to heal us and bring us back into homeostasis, which is balanced and aligned with our true self. Sensitive energy fields have many holistic healers believing that the capacity of the body to heal itself or be healed depends on changes being made to the energy fields in and around us. The ways in which this healing energy is channeled may differ widely, but most methods of spiritual healing focus on harnessing energy to bring about healing of the body. Sound, color, crystals, feathers, and totem animals, as well as the simplest tool of all, the healer's hands, all have the ability to channel healing energy. Energy can be channeled into the body from a variety of sources to balance and heal the mind, body, and spirit. So how is healing energy channeled? In almost every system of channeled healing, a tool such as a crystal is used to access the healing energy. Often, this channeling relies on the tool used to focus the energy, having particular qualities through which the healing energy can be accessed. Now, don't get me wrong, the hands are also a tool, and they may be used to conduct healing energy into the body. And what happens is, you're focusing on the light from your higher source, And you're focusing on that flowing through your hands, which is well known as Reiki healing as well. Energy healing, Reiki healing, very similar things. It depends on the tools that you're using. And Reiki is hands-on healing. So remember, whenever using your hands to channel energy, you always want to use the universe's light. You don't want to... drain your own energy so you always want to make sure you're focusing on that ray of light coming into your hands and then going into the person that you're healing because again if you use your own energy you are going to drain the crap out of yourself and then you're going to feel like shit instead (laughs) okay so Always make sure if you are using hands on healing that you are le- allowing the universal light, the universal golden light, or the white light of the Holy Spirit to flow through you 
and through your hands and into the person. And then once that light is gone, you stop seeing the light flowing into your hands. That is the clue that the healing is complete in that area of the body. Hands-on healing is used in the belief that the healer's hands act as a conduit for healing energy to be passed directly to the patient's body and spirit. Some healers will not use physical touch, however, but instead transmit the healing power through the patient's aura. They still use their hands as a tool, but what is known as aura healing is the healer's hands work at about four inches above the patient's body and restore their energy field. With that said, I'm going to give you some types of channeled healing, like tools, okay? Because from culture to culture, the exact nature of healing methods vary. However, most forms of healing work on the same principle, channeling energy into the body. One, North American medicine wheels. The medicine wheel represents the circle of life and is regarded as a powerful healing tool by Native American Indians. They use compass directions. A medicine wheel incorporates the directions north, south, east, and west, to which its maker attributes different meanings such as healing, passion, and power. For each direction, an animal totem is chosen and a amulet is placed in that direction. Once the wheel is finished, its maker prays to it, asking for healing and change, then leaves promising to make another medicine wheel. Medicine wheels are made as offerings by Native Americans for healing purposes. Tibetan Healing The ancient singing bowls of Tibet are one of the earliest examples of sound healing. They arrived in Tibet from India in the 6th century BC. Healing the chakras traditionally uses singing bowls, and singing bowls are used to aid meditation, but are also used in healing. As it was discovered that the rich sounds that they produce have healing effects on all of the chakras. The energy centers of the body are the chakras. And the use of the Tibetan prayer wheel also have a long tradition in healing, consisting of a container packed with copies of the mantra, Om Mani Padmi Mum. Now, excuse me if I'm saying this wrong or mispronouncing anything. <laughs> okay, so that again is Om Mani Padmi Mum. And I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or Google anywhere if you wanted to use that mantra. Okay? But what happens is they pack these copies of this mantra and they wind them around an axle and mountain, I'm sorry, and mount them on a handle. And it's spun around to release the blessings. That's pretty cool, right? Next is sacred healing feathers. Native American Indian healers use feathers in a variety of ways to promote healing. In many cases, a healer chants through the feather that is placed on a patient's body to bring about healing. Different types of feathers are selected for use depending on the patient's condition. It could be turkey feathers, for example, that are used in the healing of digestive orders. And then we go back to Reiki. I was just talking about Reiki. <laughs> Reiki is an ancient Japanese healing art that focuses on restoring a disrupted flow of energy within a person's chakras. The name comes from Rei, R-E-I, meaning spiritual consciousness, and Ki, K-I, meaning universal life force. In Reiki, the hands are the tool through which the Reiki practitioner passes energy to your body to activate its self-healing abilities. And in Reiki, the hands are used as a conduit to rebalance energy. 
Now next is sound healing. And this can also relate to the Tibetan healing that we just talked about, which is the singing bowls. Sound healing is based on a similar principle that is used in crystal healing, which we're going to review next. Everything has its own vibration, including the organs of our bodies. But when the vibration is incorrect, the body is subject to disease. By exposing the body to the correct vibration, which is projected electronically or using the voice, that balance and health can be restored. Now, I want you to really pay attention to that, and I'm going to repeat it. Sound healing is based on a similar principle that is used in crystal healing. Everything has its own vibration, including the organs of our bodies. But when the vibration is incorrect, the body is subject to dis-ease. And by exposing the body to the correct vibration, balance and health can be restored. Sound vibrations can be used to restore the body's natural aura and energy levels. I am getting chills, people, while I'm saying this. Because, and that's my sign from spirit, that this is correct and important information. And next I'm going to review crystal healing. Okay, because crystals, people don't realize how much energy crystals hold. Okay, and I always call them record-keeping machines. It's like they literally keep records of what is going on in and around them from as they pass through people's hands. This is why it's so important to keep your crystals cleansed. Because if you use them to clear away something negative... You want to clean it out of the crystal so this way it doesn't come back into you and pass back and forth, okay? So crystals contain a specialized energy that can be harnessed in another healing technique. Crystal healing has been used for many centuries by healers. It goes from the ancient Egyptians to the shaman of Native America due to their perfect atomic structure. You hear that? They have a perfect atomic structure (laughs) crystals provide an energy with which the body can retune itself in other words crystals have a perfect atomic structure that's the structure we want our bodies to be in a perfect atomic structure During a crystal healing session, a selection of crystals will be placed on or around you according to the healer's assessment of the appropriate energy for your condition. And every crystal holds different healing powers and healing abilities. I always say crystals choose you. Okay, when you're attracted to them, it's because they're calling out to you. So, and sometimes, I'll tell you, even when you go, ew, oh, that's an ugly crystal, it's because there's something else that has to be healed in you that you don't want to see, and you're basically resisting it. With that said, I want to talk to you a little bit about understanding your aura, which is the energy field that surrounds the body, and it can provide clues to your health and emotional state however your aura is showing up okay because the aura of the human body is described as an egg-shaped field of light and color caused by energy vibrations now remember i was just saying about the energetic vibrations surrounding you and this week for your freebie I am going to give you a chart that can interpret the colors of your aura and what they mean and the emotional, mental, and physical indications that could be affecting you in your life and what you need to balance. To get your freebie, you can go to www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources and again all the links will be in the show notes so let's start by understanding your aura and what it is the aura is an energy field that encompasses the body it's described by healers and clairvoyants as an egg-shaped area of light 
and color that extends beyond the skin. Auras are thought to be caused by the vibrations that surround every material object. The energy from non-living objects, unlike living things, is fixed and unchanging. So, in other words, anything that is uh, non-living, a table, a lamp, anything that doesn't breathe, okay, the energy is fixed on that specific object. Oh, I'm also going to give you a little exercise so you can learn how to see your own aura. It's really cool. I've done it before in the past, and it's really cool. And if you really focus, you can see it, okay? The human aura is both an energy field and a reflection of the body's subtle life force. These energies are affected by your lifestyle and your environment. Your aura reflects your health, your character, your physical and psychological well-being. It also acts as an indicator of disease long before the onset of symptoms. And to the trained eye, a human aura appears blue. But a type of imaging called Kirlian photography reveals many colors. Kirlian photography is an aura photograph. And it's a type of photography that has a technique that makes use of the body's interaction with voltage corona discharges to produce changes in the color film. I'm going to put up a couple pictures of Kirlian photography on the website as well so you can see what it looks like. Kirlian photography is is a recognized scientific photographic process discovered in the 1930s by a Russian with a name that I cannot pronounce, (laughs) and his wife, Valentina. (laughs) Following in the wake of the Kirlian process is a development called Aura Imaging Photography. This was introduced in 1992 by Guy Coggins, an entrepreneur with a background in electronic engineering. Coggins Aura Camera 6000 is a combined optical electrical system that produces a Polaroid photograph of the person with his or her electromagnetic field. That is so cool. I want one of those cameras. I'm going to look into it more, and if I find out more information, I will let you guys know. So, learning how to read auras. Various techniques can help you read your own aura or someone else's aura and these include learning to interpret the meanings of auric colors and that's the chart that I'm going to give you okay so here's how you see your own aura and you don't have to be psychic or clairvoyant to see the energy that surrounds you so try this exercise to see if you can perceive your aura one turn out the lights and lie down on your bed Leave your curtains open or allow in natural light somehow. Two, as you lie still on your bed, put your hands above you and hold them apart at their full length. Concentrate on the outstretched hands to try to see your personal aura. Three, don't stare too hard. Just gaze at your hands. Four, Move your hands slowly together until your fingertips are almost but not quite touching. You'll notice that a cloudy blue haze appears around your hand. This is your aura. Now, when I do that, it's more white than blue. So think about a, a cloud, like the cloud, the color of a cloud. That's pretty much what it looks like because it sort of has a bluish tint to it. Okay. So, how do you see someone else's aura? 1. Stand a friend in front of a softly illuminated plain white background. Make sure there isn't anything around her or him that can distract you. 2. Choose one spot on your friend's body at which you want to look at. The center of the forehead is the best and this is the location of the brow chakra, otherwise known as the third eye. 3. 
You'll need to focus on this spot for at least 60 seconds. After another 30 seconds, attempt to analyze your friend's surroundings with your peripheral vision while still concentrating on the same spot on their body. Try not to look away or let your mind be distracted. 4. By, the to- by this time, you should see that the background behind your friend is brighter and has different colors from the wall against which they're standing. And this is your own perception of your friend's aura. Pretty cool. Now, again, I have done these. You know, I have done the... I never did somebody else. I did my own hands and my arm. And it's really cool when you can see your own aura. And again, it helps you see where you're at emotionally and mentally and physically. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast about reading auras and types of channeling. And don't forget to go get your freebie at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. And you can get your interpretation chart of the colors of your aura and see where you can start healing. And maybe you can start using some crystals too. And that will help you get to where you want to be. So again, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. This is Lisa Maria, your host. And I will talk to you in the next podcast. Namaste. Are you looking for guidance in your life? Are you trying to figure out what your next step is? Book a psychic reading with psychic medium and spiritual teacher, Lisa Maria, who offers personal readings along with discounted home parties and events. Readings are available online or in person. For more information, visit www.lisamaria.com. That's www.lisamaria.com. Or you can contact Lisa directly at reading request at life you dot me that is reading request at l-i-f-e-y-o-u dot m-e start changing your life today